First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandavat Puspanjali. My heart, like flowers, thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Parmaradhatama Guru Pada Padma, Nittalila Pravisht Om Vishnupad, Aishtotara Sata Sri Rupanuga Charivarya, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampa. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So today is the most auspicious day. Because we have a chance to glorify the Vaishnavas. Pibanti ye Bhagavata Atmana Satam Katamritam Sravana Puteshu Sambritam 
छुट्यांति ते विषया विदुषित आशयम बरजांति तत छरण सरोर अंतकम श्रीमद् बागतम इट इस सेड पी बंती ए डोस पर्सन्स हु ड्रिंक श्रवणा पुत्रेशु संब्रितम थ्रू देर ईयर्स एंड देर ईयर्स कम फिल्ड ओवेज विथ कटामता द नेक्टर ऑफ डिस्कशंस अबाउट वॉट भागवत आत्मना सताम द सुप्रीम लोड एंड सताम हिज प्योर डिवोटिस द प्योर डिवोटिस ऑफ द लोड आर भागवत आत्मना दैट मीन्स दे आर हिज लाइफ एंड सोल If we want to please see Krishna, then the best thing we can do is serve His devotees and glorify His devotees. And what is the result of glorifying His devotees and filling our ears with their unlimited glories, that nectar? Shudyanti te vishaya vidushit ashayam. Ashay means your. antakaran the innocence the subtle body your chitta it is filled with many material impressions that is called vidushit ashay that the heart is vidushit completely polluted polluted contaminated with many many experiences in many many countless lifetimes of sense gratification so that contaminated heart in that heart we cannot realize the supremely pure transcendental love of radha and krishna but shudyanti te vishya vidushita shayam by hearing the glories of the supreme lord's devotees who are his life and soul then that contamination that mm, pollution in the heart is all purified all washed away Prajanti tat charna sarur hanti kam, and then one will go, Prajanti tat charna to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So this is the potential of hearing the glories of the pure Vaishnavas. So today is the disappearance day of Sri Haridas Thakur and Param Pooja Pad Sri Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. Of these two great personalities in my life, I never saw Sri Lahir Das Thakur. <laughs> But Param Pooja Pad, Sri Lakshmi Vigyan Bharti Maharaj, was very merciful and gave me his darshan in this life. So first, I want to remember his lotus feet. For those who don't know, he was born in a. the paradwaj gotra in very high class chakravarti brahmin family on ekadashi day shayan ekadashi day very holy day in the rampur in the bankur district of west bengal he was born in 1926 so he's just little bit younger 5 years younger than my gurudev it is very significant in my life Since in '96 I lived in Vrindavan, and there are many festivals going on all the time, especially appearance and disappearance of Prabhat Sula Bhakti Stansur Thakur and other great Vaishnavas. At that time, all the Gaudiya Mats come together. They often don't celebrate separately; they all come together. So all the acharyas of the various Mats would come. So from that time, I had the darshan of Param Pooja Pad Sula Bhakti Vigyan. Bharti Goswami Maharaj, and always he would speak with so profoundly. Huh? His memory of all those years. Okay, he's born 1926, so those uh, early years of Gaudiya Math and all the pastimes of Prabhat Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur's very near and the intimate disciples. He served them very closely. So he was like Kakubushandi. You know Kakubushandi? 
He's the crow in Lord Ram's Lila. And he lives for thousands of yugas. So he has seen everything and he remembers everything. And even Garuda had to go and take shiksha from Kakabushandi. The king of birds had to go and take shiksha from a crow. Uh -huh. Because he was not only self-realized, but also had memory of thousands of yugas. So Maharaj was like that. If anyone wanted to know any history of any Vaishnava, mm -hmm. any uh, associate of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, you could go there. And he was the encyclopedia of all the pastimes of all the great associates of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. Not only his, his disciples and their disciples also. Like my Gurudev and others, Srila Vaman Maharaj and others. Huh? And when he used to begin to speak about them, then you can tell. He would close his eyes and he was there. And if you would listen, then you were also there. Yeah. As if you can see everything that is going on. Because his words are Shabda Brahma, transcendental. They can, what is in his heart can be transmitted into the heart in the form of a vision of anyone who will hear with great honor and surrender and the Seva Bhriti, the spirit of service. So from 1996, I had the chance to hear from him. Once I was in, in the Philippines with my Gurudev. And one sannyasi came to Gurudev and said, I am very afraid. Oh, Srila Narayamraj, after you leave this world, then from whom should I hear? Whom can I hear from? But he was not satisfied because he was, this person was senior to both me and Bon Maharaj. He said, no, 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 someone else. No, oh, someone else. <laughs> Buddha said, oh, you should hear from Sila Bhakti Vigyan Bhakti Goswami Maharaj. He is Tattvavit and Rasik. He knows all Siddhantas and also he is Rasik as well. You should hear from him. Then I thought, oh. My Gurudev has a very special place in his heart for Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. So, when my Gurudev left this world, then myself and many of my god brothers and god sisters, then we all went to uh, take shelter and guidance of Param Pujapat Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj. And in our time of great pain and suffering, then he consoled us with sweet nectarian harikatha. Whatever doubts and questions we had, he would clear them in a beautiful way. So Maharaj was born in 1926. Then, he was uh, working as a teacher in a village near Madinapur in 1944. And devotees from the Gaudiya Math in Madinapur were coming there and preaching. And then he went there to the Gaudiya Math and in 1944 he met the great Vaishnavacharya, Parampujapad Srila Bhakti Dayat Madhav Goswami Maharaj. He listened to his Harikata and served him for many years and developed a deep relationship. And in 1955, 11 years later, he took Harinaman Diksha. So don't be in a hurry. Nowadays it's become a fashion, like a McDonald's drive through initiation. No need to get out of the car, you just pull up, take picture and drive away. This is not the process or the standard our Acharyas have set. So he met his Sadguru, Mahabhagavat Vaishnav Guru, 1944-1955 he received his initiation. You don't have to, everyone, don't take it now. I will not take initiation till after 11 years. <laughs> but Shastra said at least there should be at least one year of Guru Padashrai before receiving Harina. And there should be testing. The disciple should test the Guru and Guru should test the disciple both. In the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, it is said that there are two types of Guru. That is, one with attachments and one without attachments. The one who has attachments is very greedy to make disciples and he gives them initiation without testing them. 
but one who is and also when he speaks his words do not touch the heart and change your life but the, the guru who is free from all attachments when you hear his words then your heart is melting Anartas are washed away and come out from your eyes in the form of tears. So when the, the Vaisnava is pure without attachment, his words change us, transform us. And he will test the disciple before initiation. Then Brahma Vaivarta Purana explains that giving knowledge to the untested disciple brings about the ruination of the world. So Maharaj, after 11 years, he received Diksha and he left everything, left his family and job and everything and stayed in the mud there. Again, he was serving his Gurudev, Niskapata Niswarta Guru Seva. Niswarta means without any selfishness and Niskapata, without any duplicity. Oh Gurudev, you are Sakshadhari direct manifestation of Supreme Lord in this world. The form of Krishna has appeared to save me. It's very easy to stay from your lips, but in your mind thinking, oh, Gurudev is an ordinary person. He just knows a lot of Shastra. Gurudev's body is made of five elements, earth, water, fire, and air, and ether, like my body. I am eating, Gurudev is eating, I sleep, Gurudev sleeps. I sometimes get ill, Gurudev sometimes get ill. We are Similar. Hmm? So this is kapata, kapatata, duplicity. Niskapat Guru Seva. Shastra said, Acharya Maam Vijaniyam Navaman Kachit. Krishna is saying, I am the Acharya. Never have the idea that Gurudev is an ordinary mortal being. So really, from the core of the heart, having this strong faith, Vishram Baina Guru Seva, one should serve with intense faith and unprecedented attachment so in this way without any duplicity he served his guru maharaj and in 1969 another 14 years later then sila bhakti that madhav goswami maharaj gave him sannyas a diksha his name was naratam das brahmachari but now he became Sila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj. And he engaged himself fully in service. He translated into Hindi from Bengali the entire Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata Prindavan Das Thakur along with the commentaries of Sila Bhakti Stanswar Thakur. He translated the entire Sri Chaitanya Chartamrita of Srila Krishnas Kairaj Goswami along with two commentaries. Srila Bhakti no Thakur's commentary and Srila Bhakti Stansotaku's commentary. He was managing all the parikram, parikramas of his Gurudev's mission. Navadip Dham Parikrama, Pushottam Ketcha Parikrama, Braj Mandal Parikrama. So he was serving, serving, serving all the time. After some time, his Gurudev, seeing his service, he was compelled to give him the title, Seva Vigraha. So he received that title. Oh, you are truly the Bigra, the very embodiment, the personification of service. So after the disappearance of his Gurudev, then Sila Parampujapad, Sila Bhakti Vallabhjita Goswami Maharaj became the Acharya in that mission. And Maharaj became the secretary. So for years and years and years, he was always the, in the second most senior position in the mud. And he did not initiate anyone. No disciples at all. That wasn't a concern for him. He was always in the position of Sevak. Servant of the servant of his Gurudev. And he served in that capacity for many, many years until the disappearance of Sila Bhakti Valabhita Goswami Maharaj, and still he did not give initiation. But at that time, my Gurudev left this world, and all of his disciples were coming to him, and hearing from him. 
And they were also preaching to so many new people who never had the chance to be initiated by Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. So they were bringing new people to him and they were begging him, please, please, give initiation. But he never wanted to do it. Actually, this was there before Srila Bhakti Vallabhtir Maharaj left because in the final portion of his Leela, Srila Bhakti Vallabhtir Maharaj was in the Samadhi. He was in trance for a very, very long time before he left this world. So there was no way in which he could, uh, that anyone could know from their perspective whether or not he was giving his own uh, acceptance to disciples. So some of his senior sannyasis were bringing the devotees into the room and they were giving mantra and saying you are initiated by him, but he was in Samadhi, not speaking. So there was no real com uh, confirmation. So some devotees, they didn't want to do this. So now, Srila Bhaktivigam Bharti Maharaj was in this position. The Acharya is still prakat, he's still alive and with us in this world. Still, But he's in a deep samadhi of praying for Krishna. So he's not communicating with the conditioned souls who are still in this plane. And so he was not in agreement with those who are doing initiation uh, at that time say oh yes you are initiated by him because where how is the relationship actually did he speak the mantra did he say i accept you did he test you or anything no so maharaj he always spoke the truth whether or not it was palatable for others so he wrote one very very humble letter. if you read this letter that he wrote your heart will break how humble he wrote the letter. He said, in these circumstances, I mm, cannot accept this. This is not according to Siddhanta. And now many devotees are coming to me. And though I have not given initiation for a long time, I am bound to accept that. And then he began his Acharya Lila. Then many persons who were junior to him, even, they became upset with him. Oh, Maharaj is still alive and you, have, you are, have given initiation. So this is against the constitution of our institution. And they criticized him. Kick them. I said kick them out. Yes, yes, uh, he's saying they kicked them out. I always present things in a very gentle way. <laughs> So, they were less, less than kind. <laughs> and uh, because of this, he was compelled to leave the mission, that his Gurudev's mission that he had served his whole life. Due to juniors, those who were so junior to him. It may be that amongst them, some of them, they were eager, they wanted to become, because they are disciples. And they think, oh, now we will become Acharya. So sometimes these things happen. And very humbly, he did not try to assert himself. He did not try to fight. Only he spoke the truth. And very humbly, he left the mission and began his own mission. That is the Vishuddha Chaitanya Vani Prachar Kendra. The preaching center of the Vishuddha Chaitanya Vani, the pure teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then with only a very small group of new disciples and a group of quite senior Shiksha disciples, very senior and qualified, then he began his preaching. And his lectures were published in a series of books and he helped so many uh, devotees. Then after that, who became the Acharya in the mission quickly. He passed away. Then there was another one and another one. So they came one after another. Yeah? Now, Mujibhad Sri um, uh, Vishnu Maharaj is Acharya. He is very humble. And he was always in the background very humble. And so many became Acharya and went away, went away. And now he has become. I think just like 
Gop Kumar, you know, he was chanting his mantra. And by the power of his mantra, he found that he became the king of heaven, Indra, by chance. He became Lord Brahma by chance, like this. So like this, he is a very humble and great Vaishnava and my dear friend. Now he has become the Acharya of that mission. So if you have the chance to have his association, then you can be very inspired by him. If he's watching my pronounced to you, Maharaj. <laughs> so, there is some history of the life of Maharaj you can read online. But uh, I want to only remember this morning, by Maharaj's mercy, many memories of his lotus feet were coming in my mind by his mercy. So I want to remember the nectar of his association. At these special festivals in Brindavan, at Navadip Dham Parakrama, every year I am leading the Navadip Dham Parakrama of Chaitanya Academy. And uh, Maharaj used to give class every day at about um, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the evening at that time. So I would take all the devotees on Parakrama of the islands of Navadip, but make sure we come back to Antadip. Mayapur by 4.30 in the evening and then we would, I would bring all the devotees and we would hear from Maharaj every day. Sometimes I would go and visit him and at any time I was fortunate to be able to see him because his personal servant was the Sipad Madha Priya Prabhu who was my old god brother. We were Brahmacharis together living in Keshavaji Gauriyamat under my Gurudev for many years before. He later became the personal servant of Srila Bhakti Vega and Bharti Maharaj. So even if Maharaj was ill or he could not see anyone, if I went there at any time, then he would tell Maharaj, it's very proud, come and open the door <laughs> and bring me in. So in this way, through Madhav Priya Das Brahmachari, he was very kind to me. So I'm remembering some of his wonderful teachings. One time he said, you must go on Parikrama, visiting the holy places of the pastimes of Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. But you should do it how? Panai Bhakata Sangye, Gora Amar Yei Sabastane, Kala Brahmana Rangye, Sei Stavastane Heribami, Panai Bhakta Sangye. Srila Bhakti Nautaku in his song, Shuddha Bhakta Chana Renu. He said that, I want to visit all the places of the pastimes of Mahaprabhu and Krishna on Parakrama, but not alone and not with general persons or even Konishta Madhyam, it's okay, but Pranayi Bhakatasana, with the association of those who have love, transcendental love. Why? Because you can go to Udav Kyari, where Simati Radharani, is burning in the fire of separation from Sri Krishna and quarreling with the bumblebee. Madhupakitava bandho mas prishangrim sapatna. Hey bumblebee, don't touch my feet. You are the friend of that cheetah in the Torah. Yeah? You can hear these things. You can read these things. But not one tear will come in the eye. You will not feel the separation. Oh, that Radhika is feeling by reading these things. Hmm? Just like a fire. If you are cold and you read about a fire, you'll still be cold. Hmm? You have to go and sit by an actual fire. And then you can feel heat. So in the same way, Pranayi Bhakata Sangye, if we perform Parakrama in the association of pure Vaishnavas, in whose heart is burning the fire of separation, when we sit next to those Vaishnavas and we listen to them, we will feel the heat realize 
something, get some glimpse of the brain and the glories of that place. And especially he would speak in remembering, doing Parakrama with, he's not speaking about himself, he's remembering. When he used to do Parakrama with Parampujapad, Sila Bhakti Dait, Madhav Goswami Maharaj. And how Sila Bhakti Dait, Madhav Maharaj was drowning in the nectar of Radhika's brain and all listening and they can feel it. You know that um, a controversy, a debate has been going on, like a fire of argumentation going on for years and years and years. Even today, the flames have not gone down. Jiva Tattva. Oh. Is the Swarup of the Jiva fixed? Like Srila Bhakti no Thakur has said, Jiva has a Swarup and it will manifest by Bhajan. Or is the Jiva, does he have no Swarup? And the Swarups are in the spiritual world. Because in Priti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami Pada said in Vaikuntha, there, there is a effulgence around the Supreme Lord. And in this effulgence, there are Jyotir Anksabut, millions of tiny, tiny spiritual particles. Ananta Murtaya, and they are Murtis. And when a soul in this world becomes liberated, that Mukta becomes one with one of those forms. In Priti Sandarbha, it is mentioned. So Srila Bhaktino Thakur is explained in one way and Srila Jiva Goswami Pada is explained in another way. So one day I came to Maharaj sitting, you can see it's on YouTube, the video of me sitting at Maharaj's feet and saying Srila Bhaktino Thakur has said this in Jaiva Dharma and Srila Jiva Goswami Pada has said this in uh, Priti Sandarbha. Then what should we accept, this or this or both? Please Maharaj. And Maharaj, he said that, oh, both are correct. Srila Bhakti Nau Thakur, what he has written is Samadhi Bhasha, coming from his trance, always perfect. And the same with Srila Jiva Goswami Pai. But you should understand they have written about the same thing, but looking from different perspective. So, he, this, understand this realization by Mercy of Gurudev had come to me. But we should always go to senior Vaishnavas and, and confirm. If you have some realization, go to a Shikshi Guru, ask the question, and it will be confirmed how to do it. Just like Srila Rupa Goswami, on his way to Puri, he had a dream when he stayed in the village of Satyabhama Pur. In that dream, Satyabhama appeared to him and said, Oh, you are writing a drama about uh, Radharani. You should write a separate drama about me, and by my blessing it will become extraordinarily beautiful. Then he woke up and realized, I'm writing a drama about Vrindavan and then Dwarka Lila. But now Satyabhama told me, make this, the story about me separate, that pastime, in another drama. Then when Sant Rupa Goswami arrived in Jagannath Puri, even without saying anything, Mahaprabhu said to him, Krishna nyo yaru sambhuto ya punas yustasta priya yustasta puna Vrindavanam prichadya Padam ekam nagachati Sakwachin naiva gachati Mahabhu said, don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. He never takes one foot out of Vrindavan. That Krishna who is the son of Vasudev and Devaki, Jadu Nandan, in Mathura and Dwarka, in, in Mathura, he is Purna. Purna. Complete. But Krishna in Mathura is Purnatara, more complete. And Krishna in Vrindavan is Purnatama, most complete. So don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. So what he realized in his dream, then Mahaprabhu, like a Shiksha Guru, confirmed it. And then he separated his drama into two parts. So, then one devotee asked Maharaj, in Bhajan Rahasya, there are so many chapters. <coughs> Each chapter refers to a stage in Bhakti. Sraddha, mm, Sadhu Sangha, then Bhajanakriya, Anatanivriti, then Mishta, then the next chapter, chapter 4 is Ruchi, chapter 5 is Asakti. So, do we have to go through and uh, remember this verse and chant, and remember this verse and chant? Maharaj gave very beautiful instruction. 
he said that when you were doing Nam Seva, serving the Holy Name, one thing you should always remember, you are not Karta, you are not the doer. Nam Prabhu is Karta. The Holy Name is Karta, the doer. So what Srila Bhakti Not Chakor has expressed in each chapter of Bhajan Rahasya, as you are chanting Hari Nam and your Adhikar develops, then Nam Prabhu will bring you to the next chapter. Don't try to get ahead of, of course you can read the whole book. Yeah. But actually how you are praying and how you, what mood will be there at the time of chanting, Nam Prabhu will bring each chapter to you. So Nam Prabhu is Karta. I had a question in my mind for many years. My Gurudev had left this world and I was thinking, I cannot answer this question. So, perhaps some of you know, there are some persons who consider themselves my disciples. It was not my idea, but my very senior Vaishnavas, like Premananda Prabhu, and especially Sri Fakir Mohan Prabhu, and others, my Shiksha Gurus, they told me, you should give initiation to these devotees. So on their order, I have given initiation to a few devotees. Mm -hmm. But I always take those who are in my Anugatya, under my guidance, to the lotus feet of Mahabhaku Advaishnavas, always. So I always used to go to Maharaj and give Dandavat Pranam again and again. Even till today, I remain under guidance of my Shiksha Gurus. So one time I went there to Maharaj. I cannot pretend I, I know everything, I am sorry. I had a question. I, and I cannot answer it. So I came to Maharaj and said, Oh Maharaj, after Chaitanya Mahapu visited Jag uh, Ram Kelly from Jagannath Puri, he was on his way to Vrindavan and he came to vi the village of Ram Kelly. And there he met with Rupan Sanatana. And he gave them instructions. You should leave everything, leave your job and your family and everything. Go to Vrindavan and come and meet with me. Then Mahaprabhu, he didn't go to Vrindavan that time, he got as far as Kanai Natchala and then he returned because Sanatana Goswami Pad had told him, Vrindavana Yatta Nahi E Paripati, this is not the way to go to Vrindavan, surrounded by thousands of people. Along the way, thousands of people were following him. And because there are different moods, if you are in a big group of many people with different moods, then your own mood cannot manifest. So Rupa Goswami Pad said, Sajate Asha is day. Associate with those who are in a mood, same mood that you aspire for. Hmm? If you want to be in Madhuya Rasa, like Rupa Goswami, be with Vaishnavas who are deeply absorbed in that. If you want to be in Sakharas, like Goridas Pandit, be with such devotees. If you want to serve Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha, go to Sri Rangam and be with Sri Vaishnavas. So we should have like-minded associates, otherwise our mood will not manifest. So Sanatana Goswami Pad said this to Mahaprabhu, and Mahaprabhu was thinking, yes, it's true. Madhavendra Puri was alone doing Harinam, and Krishna himself came and bought him a pot of milk. Hmm? This will not happen if you're with so many persons. So Mahaprabhu turned around, he went back to Puri. So after Mahaprabhu had gone, then Rupa and Sanatan, they were thinking, we have to get out of our entanglement. They had big positions in the government and big responsibilities and their family and everything. So at that time, they engaged some brahmanas in doing prayashtita of Krishna Mantra. And they, it's written in Chaitanya Charitamrit also, they paid those brahmanas a lot of money to do prayashtita. So prayashtita, um, sorry, purascharana. Purascharana. Purascharana is a, a ritual that you have to do. You have to do five sacrifices, morning, noon, and evening, and chant the um, Krishna mantra, lakhs and lakhs, thousands of times. You have to feed brahmanas, and there are so many rituals that you have to observe in Purascharana. 
So my question was this, that Rupa Goswami Pad, in his Padyavali, he said, no dis no diksham na cha sat kriyam na puras charyam mana vikshate mantre na phala, uh, rasanas pragaiva falati si krishna namakmaka that krishna's name the holy name of krishna the mahamantra hare krishna hare krishna krishna krishna, krishna hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare no diksham it does not depend on diksha Sec the second, what people are calling second initiation now. It doesn't depend on diksha. Nacha satkriyam, it doesn't depend on satkriya, any pious activities. Na purascharyam, it does not depend on performing the purascharyam pura rituals. So, if Rupa Goswami himself has written that the holy name does not depend on the performance of purascharyam, why is it that he was paying so many brahmanas a lot of money to do all these rituals? Hmm? I don't know. Please, explain to me. So then Maharaj, he said a very beautiful thing. He said, first of all, in Vaidhi Bhakti, according to the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, you should perform Purascharana after receiving Diksha. So when Mahaprabhu had visited them, he changed their names. You are, you are not Sakar Malik and Dabir Kas. Now you are Rupa and Sanatana. So, the changing of name is one of the five samskars in the process of diksha. There are five samskars in, in diksha. And after that, one should do purascharana. So, though they are paramahamsa, though they are fully liberated and transcendent, out of humility, they are following some rules and regulations of Vaidhi to set an example for others. Also, I said, Maharaj, Rupa Goswami has written in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, if you do bhakti yourself, you get the benefits. But if you have a temple and you have a pujari and you pay the pujari to do the seva, you don't get the benefit of the seva. Why? Because bhakti is the Krishna mukata. It is the turning of your consciousness towards Krishna. So if you pay someone else to do the seva while you're watching TV, <laughs> then your consciousness has got not been turned towards the Krishna. So you, something is bhakti only if your consciousness is actually absorbed in that. Huh? So all of these arguments I was presenting to Maharaj. And he listened. They were very humble. So they were following uh, these rituals and engaging. They were doing themselves, but they were engaging brahmanas in this. Really, from the transcendental point of view, they were giving benefit to those brahmanas of their association. And from their point of view, they are very humble and, and following these regulations. And secondly, he said that it is their desire to become free from all entanglements and escape and go to Vrindavan and meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So even though in one sense the ritual is unnecessary but they did it as an expression of their desire so he said in spiritual life this is what you have to watch you have to see what is the intention behind everything so don't become bewildered that they did this purus charana which is in vaidhi bhakti and it's not exactly necessary especially for liberated souls but you should think that in their humility they wanted to perform, go through the performance of all of these rituals and their inner intention was, Oh, may I come out from this situation and be situated at the lotus feet of Sri Jaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in your spiritual life, always pay attention to this. Even if you are hearing, chanting and remembering, and serving the deity, and doing the so-called activities of pure bhakti, which are completely necessary. But if you have anyabilas, another intention, then it's all just like a drama. You can call some manager in Hollywood and bring some film star to come and put on a tilak and country mala and pretend to be a devotee. You are pretending. Only pretending. If in your heart you keep another desire. So always pay attention to this. Why am I performing this activity of bhakti? Anya bilashta shunyam jnana kamatya navitam anukuye in the Krishna nushlevam bhakti uttamam Without any other desire, only to for the for the benefit 
for our Sri Krishna. So, I was very inspired and very satisfied. Once I came to Maharaj, just very privately in his room, with a, a couple of senior devotees with, who were with me, like uh, my very dear brother, God brother, perhaps you know, Sripad Krishna Chandra Prabhu. <laughs> so we came to Maharaj, and we have the question that so much is written in Shastra that when Krishna has left Vrindavan about the separation of all the Vrajabhasis, but what about the separation of the Navadipasis when Sri Krishna leaves? We have heard that something about Vishnu Priya, that she was chanting Harinam, and with every mantra she was taking one grain of rice and then washing it in her tears and putting it aside. And like this she would chant from early, from the middle of the night all the way through to almost uh, noon time. And then she would take whatever, only the rice which has been bathed in the tears, she would then cook and offer this and then take prasad with Mother Sachi. But we don't see that this intensity of separation, it seems, in the other associates, in the same way. So, then Maharaj, he said that when Mahaprabhu leaves Navadvip, how the separation will manifest in different devotees is different because they all have different relationships. Even the, the love of Sachimata is higher than the love of Vishnu. People don't understand. She's Madhya Yashoda. And Vishnu Priya is the incarnation of Navada Bhakti, nine types of Vaidhi Bhakti. At most we can see that she is the incarnation of um, Satya Bhama. Lakshmi Priya is in, considered to be incarnation of uh, Rukmini and Vishnu Priya incarnation of Satya Bhama. So their, their bhakti is uh, according to Mariada, rules and regulations. So he said that is why it was Srila Bhakti no Thakur who advised Srila Bhakti Stansu Thakur when he made the temple, the, in the Yoga Pit temple, to put Mahaprabhu and Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya in the middle. Why? Because Radha Krishna, also Radha Madhava there, one cannot approach Radha Madhava directly. They don't accept service actually in Vaidhi Bhakti. If you serve Radha Krishna in Vaidhi Bhakti, then Lakshmi Narayan within Radha Krishna accept that seva. So first you have to serve Mahaprabhu in Vaidhi Bhakti. And therefore, Jagannath Das Babaji had, uh, uh, in, uh, Jagannath Das Babaji had told Srila Bhakti Thakur and Srila Bhakti Thakur told Bhakti Stansa Thakur, you should uh, establish the Vishnu Priya and uh, Lakshmi Priya with Goranga Mahaprabhu. That is Gaur Narayan. Gaur Narayan, there. In. So first serve Mahaprabhu in Vaidhi Bhakti. Afterwards, it will, be, it will become Raganuga Bhakti if one has the association of devotees in Ragamark. And then one becomes qualified to serve Radha Madhav. So he said that the different uh, devotees in Navadvip, how their separation manifests, is different according to the type of their love. And then he gave a very beautiful example that I pray I will never forget for my whole life. He said, look at the example of Nityananda Prabhu. When Mahaprabhu left Navadvip, then Nityananda Prabhu, he was preaching everywhere. He would go to visit Mahaprabhu in Puri for a few months and Mahaprabhu would send him away and again he would go preaching. When even after Mahaprabhu disappeared, Nityananda Prabhu was preaching everywhere. He said this was his separation. His separation manifested in that way. Why? Because that is his service to Mahaprabhu. To spread Harinam, Sankirtan everywhere. So though Vishnu Priya, the separation was manifested in washing the bog with her tears. But for Nityananda Prabhu, his separation from Mahaprabhu was manifest 
in his deep attachment to the savor of Mahaprabhu in the form of prachar everywhere. And one should understand the life of Vaishnavas in this way also. You see? Those who are not liberated, those who are conditioned souls, those who have bodily attachment, those who still have worldly desires, they're also so-called preaching. But their preaching is only for their own pratishta, only for their own name and fame. But those who have deep love for their Guru Padapadma and realization, eh, then they're also preaching. But why? It is the anubhav of their deep separation from the Guru. So they prachar, they cannot stop preaching. They're doing bhajan every morning and then when they, after their bhajan, they go out and they're preaching. This preaching is the overflowing of love in separation from their Gurudev. Because as long as they are following the order of their Gurudev, they feel the hand of Gurudev on the shoulder. When Gurudev was old, then he always used to call one close disciple and put his hand on the shoulder and walk into class to preach. So those who are serving their Gurudev heart and soul, they can feel the hand of Gurudev on their shoulder when they go to class. Maharaj would, he was quoting the verse, Maharaj would always quote this verse. Sneha Lesha Peksha Matra Sri Krishna Kripa Sneha Vasha Hoya Kare Swatanta Achara Who has spoken this verse? Where does it come from? You have heard from your Gurudev, but who is he quoting? Oh, you should know it very deeply. These are the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You see, after Mahaprabhu had accepted sannyas and came to Puri, he was there only for a few months and on the pretext of going to South India to search out his brother, when he was really looking for the Vaish Rasik Vaishnava Association of Ramananda Rai. So he set off to South India and he toured for a few years. Then he came back to Puri. And when he came back to Puri, various associates began to arrive from different places there. So one day Mahaprabhu was sitting with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and some other devotees. And Govinda, Govinda Prabhu, the personal servant of Srila Ishwara Puri, Mahaprabhu's guru arrived there and gave Dandavat Pranam to Mahaprabhu. So he, he, he came, he said, O oh Mahaprabhu, I am the personal servant of Srila Ishwara Puripad. And just before our Gurudev passed away, he gave me this instruction, go and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So on his instruction, I have come here now at your lotus feet. Sarvabhum Bhattacharya looked at him. And he thought, Srila Ishwara Puripad is a great sannyasi and a great Brahmin, Vaishnava and Vaishnava especially. But this Govinda Das is a sudra from the lowest caste. And uh, according to Shastra, sannyasi should accept service from Brahmanas. They should only go stay in the house when they're traveling. They should only stay in the house of a Brahmin. They should only accept food from the hand of a Brahmin, not from any low caste person. But Ishwara Puri part, all his was receiving all service from Sutta. Hmm? So how is this? Sarvam Bombatcha asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In reply, Mahaprabhu said, Sneha Lesha Petra Matra Sri Krishna Kripa. Sneha Vasha Kari Sneha Vasha Hoya Kari Swastantra Achar Every word is very deep. The meaning is this. Krishna's Kripa, the mercy of Krishna, 
matra, only, exclusively. Apeksha is dependent, not on anything else, except one thing. Sneha lesha. Lesh means a little bit of sneha, affection. Service which is performed only for the pleasure of the object of service. With a melting heart. Sneha means melting heart. Okay? Krishna's mercy is dependent on this. If someone serves in this way, then Krishna gives mercy. So why is Sneha Vashit? Sneha Vashahoya means Krishna comes under the control of Sneha. Kare Swatantra Achar. And Krishna does Swatantra Achar. Achar means activities. And Swatantra means independent, independent activities. So, Krishna is not independent of his devotee. Aham Bhakta Paradhino Hiyashvatantra Ivadvija. Lord Narayan said to Devasamuni, I am, I am subordinate to the love of my devotees. I am not independent. So why, does it, why did Mahaprabhu say Swatantra Achar Krishna does independent activities? Lord Brahma, when he prayed, offered prayers to Krishna in Vrindavan, he said, Asyasya Teva Vapuso Madanu Grahasya Swicha Mayasya Na Ibuta Mayasya Kopi. Oh my Lord, your body is made, not made of five material elements. You are transcendental, all powerful. I cannot estimate the extent of your shaktis, your powers, the extent of your joy the extent of the powers of your devotees and the extent of the joy they feel in serving you. And, oh my Lord, you are Swechamaya. That means you are under the control of the love and the desires of your devotees. So Krishna is not Swatantra independent. He's dependent on the love of his devotees. So why is, Krishna, why is Mahaprabhu saying, Kari Swatantra Achar? Here, Swatantra means independent of the rules written in the scripture. Hmm? If someone will say, oh, you're behaving Swatantra, doing Swatantra Cha, means scripture says you should do this, this and this, but you're acting whimsically. That is Swatantra Cha. You're not following the rules. You're acting independently of the order of your Guru and the order of Vaishnavas. Swatantra Cha. So Mahapu is saying, Krishna has Swatantra Cha, that means because he's controlled by loving service of his devotees, therefore he doesn't act according to the rules and regulations of the scripture. Krishna doesn't. And so similarly, he said, so in the same way, my Gurudev, Sakshat Hari, is directly manifestation of the Lord. And he is also controlled by the love of his devotees and he can act independently. And therefore, there is no fault in him accepting the service of a sutra, Govinda, because Govinda's heart is full of sneha, full of affection. Right. Now, Mahaprabhu has answered the question of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Mm -hmm. You see, the thing is, why does Krishna himself transgress the rules and regulations of scripture? Because he has said, Samoham Sarvabhu Teshu Name Dvestusti Napriya Ye Bajanti to Mambakya, Maite Teshu Chapyaham. I am equal to everyone. I don't favor anyone and I am not hostile or against anyone. That is for all the general people of this world. But if someone is serving me, then I am in them and they are in me. That means I become very attached to them. So Krishna is has partiality towards his devotees. He's indifferent to those who are indifferent to him. But he's partial to those who are partial to him. Because that's Krishna's nature. I reciprocate with everyone. So if someone has affection for Krishna, he never considers what is their position. He reciprocates. And Sri Guru is also like that. Everything depends on loving service. Service with affection. So... My very dear Vishwaru Prabhu, he was saying, people used to come to Maharaj and say, give me mercy, give me mercy. But Maharaj used to say, though it seems Vaishnavas are giving blessings, 
But really the mercy depends on Sneha Lesha Peksha. It depends on one should have a little affection. And then the mercy will come. Then someone may make an argument. But we heard that the mercy is ahoytuki, causeless. So that's what I want. Just give me the causeless stuff. <laughs> right? You know, when I don't have to do anything. I don't have to sacrifice anything. I can stay in my comfort zone. And all the mercy will come. That's the mercy I want. Ahoytuki kripa. Causeless mercy. Right? People think like this. So Maharaj never tolerated this ignorance. Hmm? He enlightened the whole world. He said, no, 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 no. Huh? It depends on your affectionate service. Then mercy will come. Hmm? In fact, there's no difference between mercy and affectionate service. If you are rendering the service affectionately, then that is mercy. Hmm? So the mercy is there. You just have to accept it. Just like water is everywhere in the air, but you are thirsty, you cannot drink it. So Krishna's mercy and Guru's mercy is everywhere, but you have to accept it. That mercy is the saver. So when you begin to serve, now the mercy is coming. They are together. So what is the meaning of course? If you have to surrender and serve and sacrifice, then what's the meaning of Ahoytuki Kripa, causeless? So Maharaj said, in Ahoytuki, Mm -hmm. Like Mahaprabhu prayed, na danam, na janam, na kavitam pa jagadisha kamae, mama janmani janmani isure, bhavatad bhakti, ahoy to ki to I, may I have ahoy to ki seva to you. That should be awakening in my heart every moment. So, hey to means cause. So, ahoy to ki, people say, oh yes, causeless. But here the letter A means Krishna. Akshara Uchite Krishna Savalokai Kanayaka. Just as in the, the Bij mantra Om. A U Ma. A means Krishna. U means Urja Shakti Radhika. And Ma. Makshara Jiva Vachaka. Ma means the Jiva, the soul, me. So Om is the, the embodiment of the loving relationship between ourselves and Radha Krishna. This is the meaning of So just as the A in Om means Krishna, so the A in Ahoytuki means Krishna. So Ahoytuki Seva means the service whose only cause is Krishna. It is to please Krishna. You see? So this is the meaning of Ahoytuki. That when we serve with affection only to please Krishna, then the Kripa will come. More and more mercy will come. It is a Hoytuki Kripa. It is the Kripa that is the result of serving Krishna without any other cause. So in this way, Maharaj cleared so many beautiful points of Siddha. Oh. <laughs> this morning I just woke up and when I woke up by Maharaj's mercy, so many memories were coming. Yesterday I was thinking, what will I say in glorification of Maharaj? Vaishnava chinini nari devara shakati kemane chini bo mui adama pamati. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur said, even the great demigods, they cannot recognize pure Vaishnavas. So how can a person with very meager, insignificant intelligence understand Recognize, glorify pure Vaishnavas. I was remembering this verse and thinking. Then this morning when I woke up, many remembrances were coming. So I am remembering Maharaj was like the encyclopedia of the complete history of all the pastimes of the great Vaishnav disciples of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha so, uh, as you know, my Param Gurudev is Srila Bhakti Pragya and Keshav Goswami Maharaj. So one day Maharaj was saying, Srila Bhakti Pragya and Keshav Maharaj, he would not tolerate any deviation from the Vichadhara, from the current of conception of Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur. So after Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur's 
became unmanifest from this world, then in the Bhag Bazaar, Gaudiya Maksh, the main head, the flagship of the mission in Calcutta, there, the devotees there, they began to present some different ideas, some divergences. And one of the things they said was, oh, you should not wear saffron cloth. Brahmacharis and sannyas, saffron cloth, this is not for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Hmm? Then, you know, because in Hari Bhakti Vlasanand Goswami part says that uh, one should not wear what uh, one should not wear uh, saffron cloth. One should wear, sorry, he writes in Hari Bhakti Vlas, one should wear white cloth. In Hari Bhakti Vlas, it's written, and many persons quote this and try to make trouble for those in our line because our sannyasis and brahmacharis in our line they wear saffron. So, uh, but you should know that if you go to Hari Bhakti Vilas and read that section, it's discussing how a Grihastha in his home should serve his deity. <laughs> so it said the Grihastha in his home when he's serving his deity should put on, then the verse comes, you should wear white cloth, like that. So context is important. So one thing they said is, you should not, Vaishnava should not wear saffron. And the other thing they said is, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's for very silent or quiet japa. It should not be chanted out loud in Harinam Sankirtan. Hmm. So then, now also among those devotees at Bhag Bazaar Gaudiya, I'm thinking, today is Sri Haridas Thakur's disappearance day, and I have to tell his life. But I, I cannot come to the end of the glory of Srila Bhakti Dikya <laughs> So we'll see what happens. No one knows. You can stay for more days. <laughs> Even I don't know. So, so Maharaj was telling me, he said, that time your Param Gurudev, he became like fire. His own brother was one of the devotees, Srila Odalubi Maharaj. His own blood brother was one of the sannyasis in Bhagavad Gaudiya at that time. And for this, he disconnected from his own blood brother even. Because he had made a diversion divergence from the teachings of his Guru Bhada Padma. Hmm? That is, our spiritual family is forever. The Sambandha relation with Guru, Sri Guru is paramount. So he gave up his brother. Even when Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj was staying at Devananda Gaudiya Mat. Oh, once some devotees uh, from the Mat, they went preaching and they came back to Calcutta and they came back. Maharaj said, so where did you stay in Calcutta? They said, oh, we stayed at Bhagavad Gaudiya oh. Now you should fast for three days, dry fast. Hmm? To become purified. Because you have seen a person who had an idea that had uh, diverged from the teachings of Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhartha Digest. They just digest what it means to have Guru Nishta. Guru Nishta facing Guru is the backbone. It is the spine of Bhakti. If your spine is healthy, you can run. But if you get a, just a slight injury to the spine, you are paraplegic. You cannot move even. So in the same way, if we have just a little doubt in the, our Gurudev and Gurudev's teachings, then you become paralyzed in Bhakti. You cannot move at all. And if someone has Guru Nishta, firm faith in Guru Dev, then he's healthy and he can run, gallop on the path, like a horse. <laughs> Very quickly he can progress. So, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshi Goswami's uh, Nishta was like this. So Maharaj Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj, he was telling me that when they uh, introduced these two deviations, no loud Hare Krishna Mahamantra Kirtan and also no saffron cloths. Then Param Gurudev said, that's it, I will take them to court. <laughs> hmm? Because Gaudiya Math is the mission of Srila Bhaktisthan Sutakur, I will prove in court that these are his teachings and so they are imposters and they are thieves. Hmm? And so they should be arrested and they should be fined, uh, otherwise they should uh, recant and they should disavow their previous statements. 
So when Sila um, Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj was preparing the court case and writing, he was very expert in legal affairs. He was writing the documents and he, then he was sending them here and there. Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bhakti Maharaj was serving him. And he was taking the documents, proofreading them and then taking them to a, a lawyer and coming back and, and going to the court, filing them in the court. That was Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bhakti Maharaj was doing that seva. Was Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj. So then gradually, gradually the day came. The day of the court case came. But on that day, the devotees of um, Bhagavad Gaudiya they all came to the court with Murtanga and cartels, dressed in saffron and loudly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Bhakti Pragyan Keshe Maharaj said, Oh, forget it, you will not make this case. <laughs> and your Gurudev said, said, but you did so much work on writing all these papers and everything and working with a lawyer and giving them so much money and everything, and you will just drop it before even the case begins? Huh? He said, yes, because I have no spirit to make any uh, retribution or vengeance. I have no ill will towards them. I only want that they'll follow Prabhupada. Ah, and so because they came in saffron cloth and loudly chanting Harina, he was satisfied and he dropped the case. <laughs> These things, they are not written anywhere. Even who was there as the secretary going backwards and forwards? Only Sila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj. So only a person like him, like Kaku Pushandi, the great wise old crow who knows the history from so many yugas. Only he can uh, tell such beautiful pastimes. <laughs> and hearing this, my love for my own Param Gurudev was nourished and growing and growing. I can never repay him. So, and remembering some more. <laughs> so, one time we were at, um, at uh, Govardhan. And Srila uh, Bhakti Vigyan Bhakti Maharaj was there. He was staying in the mat. And I came. And I was in another room. Some sannyasis invited me. Oh, Prem Prabhupada, come. We want to talk to you. We have some problems. So let's discuss together and try to come up with a solution. And see what's written there in Shastra. So it turned out that the one devotee was coming to Sila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj and asking for sannyas. He was an old devotee, very, very senior devotee. And he came to ask for sannyas. And now Maharaj was also very, very, very old. It was his Auntie Leela, his last, some of his last pastimes. So he came to ask. And Maharaj is very merciful. But some other devotees were telling, no, no, don't give, don't give. So he said, we'll decide later. So then the emergency meeting was there, and I came up and they grabbed a prayer for coming the emergency meeting. <laughs> so then they said, look, this devotee, many years ago, he'd done something. Like 25, 30 years ago. 30 years before, he'd done some terrible things. But then afterwards, it seems he'd become rectified maybe. And he had, uh, he was in good standing, but before he danced, and he, this was well known among the devotees. So the devotees were saying, if Maharaj would give sannyas to him, then many, many people who are still angry with that person, they'll turn against Maharaj and the, the mission will be impeded. So, then what will we do? I said, Maharaj is Swatantra. <laughs> He's independent. What he likes, he can do. So, you should inform him of all the details and then he will do this. Many devotees were coming. New and young devotees who had never really interacted with Maharaj much. Maybe they saw him a few times. Or they'd never seen him before even and they were coming. Uh, to India, some for the first time, 
because they heard the great Maha Bhagavad Vaishnava, we, we should take shelter. And the senior devotees around Maharaj, they were coming to him and giving the list of the persons for initiation. So, though Shastra has said that gurus should test the disciple and all these things for all this period of time, these are the general rules. But for a great Mahabhagavat Vaishnava Acharya, they also follow. But in their very last Leela, the last final pastimes, then their mercy is overflowing and they may not follow all these things. And they will give initiation and tell and you should follow this. And they will give them some shelter, give mercy to them and some shelter that they'll be under the guidance of some senior devotees after they have become apricots and manifest. Because they will speak through those senior devotees, though they are not visible or physically present. But they will speak through their satsyasis and give further guidance. So, the devotees were making the list and giving to Maharaj. So one devotee said, um, said, oh, these are the people for the initiation. And then someone else came and said, oh, but I don't think this person is ready. I don't think he's qualified. So then what should we do? Then Maharaj said a very wonderful thing. He said, now I am very old. I did not get the chance to test these persons. So I am depending on you, my senior devotees. You test them and those you think are qualified, you can put on the list. And I will give initiation. So, my suggestion is this, when you're making the list, Maharaj said, when you make the list, you should remember this one thing. If the person is qualified and you put them on the list, then I will accept them and I will take away all their karma. But if you put, if you put someone on the list who is not qualified, then you will take their karma. <laughs> All right. Then everyone was all. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a penny. <laughs> Very beautiful pasta. <laughs> he said, I will take responsibility for those you recommend, sincerely, who are qualified. But if you put an unqualified person on the list, you will take responsibility. Now, I'm remembering the pastime which is most dear and the final, my final exchange with Maharaj. In his last uh, Radhastavi in this world, Maharaj went to a new mat was just being opened in his mission in the Govardhan, in Govardhan. So there was just like a, a small building, some deities were there, and there was a hut for Maharaj, little Bajan Kuti for Maharaj, and then just waste, not wasteland, it's Govardhan, but just open land, just trees growing here and there, not developed at all. On the Yatipur side of Govardhan, you know, in between Yatipur and Radhakund. So it was Radhastami. And uh, you know, it said that Radharani takes bath three times a day. So, in the morning, in Gopal Dham on the bank of Jamuna, at my Bhajan Kuti there, there was a big Mahabhishek installation of deities of uh, Radhamadan Gopal. So there, there was Abhishek of Radharani, Radharani's morning bath. And then from there I went to Govardhan, and there was Abhishek of Radharani at Govardhan. And the Maharaj, did Abhishek along with the devotees. And so that was Radharani's uh, noon bath. And then from there I went to our Chaitanya Karim Ashram in Radhakund. And in the evening we did Abhishek of Radharani there. So Radharani takes bath three times a day. So we made three Abhisheks on that day. So in the noon time I went there and Maharaj gave a very beautiful class on the glories of Shimati Radhika. And then there was Abhishek. And then mm, just after that, Maharaj retired to his room and because he was very old at that time and he was lying down in his bed in his bhajan. 
So at that time, my heart was really burning with a question. And I knew, <laughs> Maharaj will not be with us very long. And he is the only person in the world who can answer this question. There is no living person in the whole world that can answer this question. And it's very, very important for me. Perhaps you know that there was a time in the 60s when my Gurudev was in charge of Keshavi, Keshavji Gaudiamat in Mathura. And his Gurudev was in Navadip Dham, Devananda Gaudiamat mainly, but he used to come every year for the Brajmanda Parakrama and Gurudev used to go there for Navadip Dham Parakrama. So, Some envious persons and critical persons, they have said that Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami is not bona fide because even though his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pagran Keshmaj, is very great and he's the sannyas guru of Srila Prabhupada, but there was a time when Srila Narayan Raj ran away from the mud and went to Govardhan and went to Radhakund leaving his guru and leaving his guru se service and uh, uh, took shelter and received Siddha Pranali from Babaji's at Radhakund. And Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj was very angry with him. So he is not a bona fide disciple and uh, so no one should go and hear from him. Hmm? And even one person, even this person you probably all know, and if you are watching then you may remember, was deputed to write an official paper explaining this, why Srila Narayan Maharaj is not bona fide. Mm -hmm. So, I knew something what had happened, because my Gurudev told me himself. At Manasi Ganga Govardhan, just on the side of Manasi Ganga, there was an old broken down house in a field. And many years before, Srila Gurudev, he had just disappeared from the mud. And he went and stayed in that old broken house, chanting, just chanting day and night, day and night. He said when he came there, there was heavy rain, it was flooded everywhere. He had no food or anything. And at that time, Giridari Panda, do you know Giridari Panda from Manasiganga? Huh? He often used to do Parakrama with my Gurudev and also with Srila Bhakti Valaptitha Maharaj. So Girdhani Pandya was very young then and his family, they were the pandas of Govardhan for Bhaktisthan Thakur and even in their book, you know, because when a panda takes someone on Parikrama, then they have to sign the panda's book. So in his family book, he has signature of, of Gurudev, Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Raj, Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasa Thakur, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur even. Uh, so we keep very close relation with the pandas in, in Govardhan, in Nandagaon, in Varsana, in Vrindavan, in Mathura, to this day, I have very close relation with all those to keep the tradition going. The relationship with Braj Bas is a very important part of Raghunuga Bhakti. Guru goes day, goes dialai, su su chane, busura. Busura, what does it mean? The Brahmins of the Dham, who are the Tirtha Purhits of, of Braja. So, Gurudev said, I experienced what Krishna has said. Ananyas chintayam tumam yejana paripaste teisham nitya abhiyoktanam yogaksayam bhavahana. If one always thinks of me, Krishna said, whatever you need, I carry it. And when I came there, everything was flooded, I had no food. But miraculously, Giraj Govardhan in the, uh, inspired Giridari Banda to come and bring me some rotis and some chapati and some chach, some prasad. So in this way, I was just doing bhajan. Good have told me this. So when I was uh, young, eh, one day, I also disappeared from the mud. Everyone was looking for me. They called the police even. They were searching. But they could not guess where I was. I had also disappeared and gone and stayed in that same broken down house. <laughs> to do bhajan there. Mm, alone for some time. Just in memory of my Gurudev. Because Gurudev said that at that time, that is when I attained my city. You see? So the place where a Vaishnava 
Of course, he's Nityasiddha, but he's doing the Leela of going through the stages. The place where a Vaishnav attains his uh, Siddhi, that becomes Siddhasthan, Siddha Bhumi. And if you do bhajan in the same place, then so much power is there. The Prabhav, it's called Stan Prabhav, the influence of the place. So in memory of my Gurudev, many years later, I went there in that broken house in the field by Manasikanga. I also stayed for days there. Then uh, Gurudev became Siddha, I did not become Siddha. I think I only made Vaishnava Parat because they're all looking for me everywhere. <laughs> so, anyway, I tried to remember my Guru. Hmm? So then later, do you know my Gurudev's match at Govardhan? Girid Hari Gaudiya match. Why is it at Manasiganga? Because he bought that field. He purchased that field. And he wanted to be in Samadhi in that place where he got his Siddhi. You see, just like Bhaktisiddhanta Bhakti Thakur, he was brought from uh, uh, Calcutta uh, by, sorry, he was brought to Prajapatanam in Mayapur by Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshmaj, and he was put in Samadhi there. Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshmaj insisted, no, no, you have to bring him here and put Samadhi here. Why? Because that's the place where Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Siddhanta Thakur did his vow to chant a billion names. Hmm? 10 years from 1905 to 1915 and had his leela of attaining his city there. So he, so in the same way, Gurudev wanted to be in Samadhi at Govardhan there. So he bought that land, and but then when they made the construction, they knocked down that house. And he was actually at the place where the reception is, just on the left side of the gate. They knocked that down and there's a Pushpa Samadhi there now because Gurudev's pastimes, he left from Puri and they took him to Navadweep and put him in Samadhi there in Koladweep. So one may think, oh, that his desire was not fulfilled to be in Samadhi at Govardhan. But in Navadweep Dham, Koladweep is non different from Giraj Govardhan. So his desire became true. But in a very, uh, uh, from the perspective of Gora Rasa, the Rasa of Gora Lila, very special. So anyway, so I knew something about this history that Gurudev had gone there and done bhajan. But deeply I had not discussed it with him and now Gurudev left. So how will I, I will never know. So on that road after me, after Maharaj had gone in his room to take rest, then I was a bit desperate and I came and knocked on the door. Uh, no one can see him now. Mother Priya, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Brent Rose, okay. So then, <laughs> Madam Priya brought me in and closed the door, locked the door. And I came and I knelt down at Maharaj's bed, at his bedside, very close to him because he cannot hear so well. I said, Maharaj, only you can help me. Please help me. What happened many, many years ago, before I was born, when my Gurudev went to Govardhan, because people are saying some criticism. So, it turns out that I, by asking Maharaj, I hit the jackpot. <laughs> because he knew of this. He was the only person in the world, really, who could answer. And the reason is this. When Gurudev disappeared, no one knew where he was, except for one person. Who was that? Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati. Because when Gurudev was there, he felt this very intense desire. I want to study the commentary of Vishnu Thakur on Uchwala Nilam. But in those days, it was very rare and difficult to find. So he wrote, he thought, who can help me? My very dear friend, Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj. And he secretly wrote a letter to Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj, requesting, please find this commentary on Uchwala Nilam and try to arrange to send it for me. So then, without telling anyone, he is a very confidential associate of my Gurudev. So without telling anyone, Srila Bhakti began, Bharti Maharaj set out. He went to Delhi, he went in all the bookshops there, esoteric, religious, Sanskrit bookshop, could not find. He went to Bengal, he went to Calcutta, he was searching everywhere there. Finally, he found a copy, and then he brought it to Gurudev, in uh, his, where he was staying secretly at Manasi Ganga. And Gurudev was so pleased. 
what service he has done. He was so determined to do Vaishnav Seva. And Gurudev was staying there doing bhajan. And um, he did not, uh, he was not preached to by the Babas at Anandasi Ganga. He was preaching to them. And also you should know that uh, the line at Manasi Ganga, the, uh, the Bhajan Kutir of Sanatana Goswami, Chakleshwar Mahadev, they were actually very favorable to Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur. Not everyone was against him. So in that line, that is the line of, uh, of Manohar Das Babaji and uh, another, now I don't remember. They were very favorable to um, Sula Bhakti Stansu Thakur. So Gurudev was doing bhajan there. Now, Srila Maharaj had to keep this a secret. Could not tell anyone. And he went to Keshavji Gaudimat and he was in Keshavji Gaudimat when Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj arrived from Navadweep and arrived in Mathura there. And he was there when the devotees, he, is, oh, he said, oh, where is Srila Narayan Maharaj? And the devotees said, oh, he has gone. He has left. And Srila Bhakti began Bharti Maharaj. He's lying on his bed and remembering. And as he's speaking, I feel as if I'm there. He said, I was there when the devotees told Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj this news. And I saw with my own eyes how immediately Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj broke down crying. And then Pujapa Bharti Maharaj, he said to me, you should understand that this is a special Leela. To manifest to the world the beautiful relationship between Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Dhanta Narayan Maharaj Guru Dev. Just like no one can understand the love in the heart of Braj Gopis. Even Krishna could not understand. But when Krishna disappeared from the Rasa Leela and they began to weep and then Krishna saw, then he could understand something, the extent of their prayer. So similarly, no one could understand the extent of the love of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj for your Gurudev. And so this special pastime manifest that everyone could see that when he went to do his bhajan, then that love which was hidden, it became manifest before everyone. And I saw it myself with my own eyes. So then Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bhakti Maharaj told me that you should understand that at that time, some persons in the mat, before my Gurudev had disappeared, some persons in the mat, they were making some problems for him. He was serving as much as he could, but no one was showing any appreciation, and they were not cooperating and, cooperating and giving so many problems. That's one thing. A disciple can tolerate problems. But on the pretext of this, he felt that now is the time he had to become completely immersed in Nam Bhajan. And so he disappeared where they could not harass him and, and involve him in whatever was going on there. And he <laughs> went there to Giraj Govardhan as Raghunath Daska Swami has prayed. Nija Nikatani Vasam Devi Pramadam Madana Leela Kandare Kandare Te Rachyati Navayuna Dwandu Masmin Namandan Itikila Kalanatam Lagna Kasta Toyome Nija Nikatani Vasam Devi Govardhan O Giraj Govardhan In your beautiful caves and kunjas Radha and Krishna are completely intoxicated in their beautiful loving pastimes You are the witness of that So please be merciful to me that I may also have darshan of Radha Krishna's Leela Give me a residence at your side. So Gurudev went there, like Raghunath Daska Swami, to pray and do his deep bhajan there. And he had the Leela of attaining his Siddha there as the Dasi of Shimati Radhika. And then, when that was complete, then Gurudev returned to the Mart. Now, Srila Bhaktivika and Bharti Maharaj said, the proof that this was a special pastime and that there was no estrangement at all or strain in the relationship between your Gurudev and your Param Gurudev is that as soon as he returned then Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj just again made him the head of Keshav Ji Gaudimat and charge of all the preaching of the whole north of India because he was mainly staying in the east of India. So this is the Praman, this is the proof. So what any, whatever anyone says, 
they are wrong, I was there. I saw everything with my own eyes. So then I was... I cannot replay Sila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj. He was the only living person in this world who could clarify all these points. So in this way, I offer my Shraddha Pushpanjali at his lotus feet. He disappeared. Just one final thing. Vaishnavas are transcendental. And just in case you had any doubt, then in his final Leela, he disappeared, not on any ordinary day, but on the disappearance day of Nama Charya Silahidasta. It was his final miracle, miraculous Leela. Param Puja Pad Nitya Leela Pabishta Om Vishnu Pad Aishtodra Sata Sri Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj Ki So, <laughs> perhaps uh, we can say a few words now time is going on, but we must say a few words about Srila Haridas Thakur. Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Maharaj himself was famous for this. Every day, without doubt, he would check the Vaishnava calendar to see whether any Vaishnava had appeared or disappeared on that day. And, you know, sometimes you may look at the calendar and think, oh, I'm not sure, I don't know who this person is or what. No. He used to say, whenever there's some famous Vaishnava, more contemporary or of ancient times, whoever it is, that day is a holy, pure time and a great moment where you can attain the mercy of that Vaishnava. So on that day, you must come together and hear and chant and remember and have a feast in their honor. And if you don't do this, if, you just, uh, if you're whimsical or complacent and don't honor, it will be an apparat. It will be an offense and it will make obstacles in devotional service. So, I'll have to say something. Following Maharaj's perfect example in glorification of Nama Chayashri Haridas Thakur. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born in this world in the year 1486. And Srila Haridas Thakur appeared in this world 35 years earlier in 1451 in what is now Bangladesh he was born in a Muslim family and his parents died when he was very young he became an orphan but Vaishnavas gave him shelter and Harinam gave him shelter so it is said that Harit Srila Haridas Thakur is a combined incarnation of a number of personalities. First of all, Brahma Mahatap, who is the son of Rishikamuni. Once his father told him, oh, you should pick Tulsi for offering in the puja to see Krishna. And he picked Tulsi and offered it without washing it first. So then his father said, oh, you are not following the rules and regulations of Shastra, so I curse you to become a Malacha. And in his next life, he became a Malacha Muslim, and it was Srila Haridas Thakur. So this personality is there. Another personality is there, Prahlad Maharaj. And also, perhaps you know, after Lord Brahma came and tried to steal away the coward boys and calves of Krishna, but Krishna bewildered him by his mystic potency, by Yoga Maya. And then Lord Brahma, he apologized. Lord Brahma's offense was worse than Indra's offense. You can say, but Indra tried to smash the whole of Vrindavan and kill everyone. Lord Brahma just took some boys and calves and put them in a cave. No, no. Brahma's offense is worse than Indra's offense. Why? Because what Indra did brought all the Prajabhasis together under Giraj Govardhan. But Brahmaji tried to separate Krishna from his devotees. So you have to see from the perspective of brain, from the perspective of love. So Brahmaji, after offering prayers to Krishna, Krishna would not look at him even. Krishna was silent. And Brahmaji had some doubt. He gave pranam again and again, and then he was flying back to Brahmalok on his swan. But on the way, Brahmaji thought, oh, you know, because one day of Brahma, 
is a thousands and thousands of yugas. One day of Brahma is a thousand cycles of ages. So it means that after Dwar uh, the Dwarpa Yuga, Krishna is here at the end of Dwarpa Yuga, then very soon he will appear again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Brahma was thinking, oh, Krishna will appear again. And I may become proud and bewildered again and make another offense. So he decided, I'll not go back to Satyalok. Let me go to the Dham of Goranga Mahaprabhu. And Lord Brahma came to Mayapur, Antadweep. And there, Lord Brahma began to call upon the names of Goranga! And chanting the name of Goranga Mahaprabhu again and again. After some time, Mahaprabhu, Goranga Mahaprabhu appeared before him. He said, I am afraid that I will become carried away with false prestige of being the creator of the universe. And I may make offense to you in your pastimes. Please give me a low birth that I may become more humble than a blade of grass. Mahaprabhu said, I bless you that when I appear, before I appear, you will appear. In a very, out, in an outcast, as a malacha. And you will be very, very humble. And you will assist me in my mission of spreading Harinam Sankirtan everywhere. And Mahaprabhu revealed to, to him what was the inner meaning, the inner purpose of his appearance. Why was Mahaprabhu coming in this world? To spread the Harinam Sankirtan is the external purpose. The internal purpose is that Krishna wants to know the glories of Radhika's brain. The beauty in him that only her eyes full of love can see. And the happiness that Radhika experiences when she tastes the sweetness of Krishna. So because that is the place where the Supreme Lord revealed his antara, his internal purpose of appearance to Lord Brahma. So it is called Antardweep. Then Mahapu disappeared and Brahmaji waited. And then in 1451, he appeared in a Muslim family. So the Brahmin boy, Brahma Mahatap, and Prahlad Maharaj, and Lord Brahma, they all present in Silaharidas Thakur. And also, Silaharidas Thakur has his original form as the eternal associate of Mahaprabhu in Nityanavadrim Dham. And they have entered into that original form, those different personalities. So, Sila Haridas Thakur has so many beautiful pastimes. Perhaps you know that one day there was a Dharma Sabha, a gathering of Vaishnavas in the house of Govardhan Majumdar, the father of Raghunath Daskaswami, in the village of Adi Saptagram, and very close to on, on the other side of the river from Panihati. So there was a, a gathering of devotees and brahmanas and scholars and they were having a discussion. So someone said, the holy name is very powerful, it can give mukti liberation. Another person said, no, 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 the holy name cannot give mukti, it's very difficult to attain mukti, even after many lifetimes. And they were discussing in this way. In the meantime, Srila Haridas Thakur arrived there. So then they asked, oh, Haridas, what is your opinion? Srila Haridas Thakur said, no, no, no. You are saying the holy name cannot give mukti, you are wrong. And you are saying that the holy name can give mukti, you are also wrong. Because the pure holy name, you don't even need the pure holy name to get mukti. Only Nam Abbas. The slight shadow of the name will give mukti. The pure holy name actually gives brain which is far beyond mukti. Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha, Prema is the Parama Purushottam, Panchama Purusharta, Prema, Prema Purusharta, the supreme goal of life. So the holy name gives Prem. Only the Abbas of the holy name can give liberation. That means someone saying the name of Krishna but, ref but using it to refer to someone else without even an intention of addressing God. That will give mukti. So there was one uh, Brahmin who was a tax collector for Govardhan Majumda because he owned seven villages. And this Brahmin, his name was Gopal Chakravarti. And he used to work for him and he was very highly paid. And he used to collect taxes. But he was a puffed up scholar and a logician. So the logicians can never understand the power of Harinam. 
And he became angry. He said, what do you say? What are you saying? It's very, very difficult to attain mukti after many lifetimes. And you are saying only Nama Bas will give mukti in a moment? This, if it's not true, then your nose should fall off. You should get leprosy and your nose should fall off. He said, I'll, even, he said, I'll cut off your nose. Haridas Thakur said, if it's not true, I'll cut off my own nose. No problem. So then, Govardhan Majumda was horrified that a Vaishnava apparat had been committed in his house. Hmm? Because everyone will be destroyed and that place becomes inauspicious. So at once, he begged forgiveness. Oh Haridas, please forgive us. And he had his uh, men, his uh, security, throw Gopal Chakravati out of that assembly. So Gopal Chakravati was thrown out. And then he begged forgiveness. Oh Haridas, please forgive us. This is very, so terrible that you have... I invited you to my home and you have been offended here. Haridas Thakur said, I am not offended. Hmm? He is a, a Tarkic person, logician. By logic, no one can understand the glories of the Holy Name. So how can it be expected that he will understand? You don't worry. So Haridas Thakur was very humbling, humble and very forgiving. So Vaishnava will, will forgive an offense. But Krishna does not forgive. Hmm? So then within three days, that uh, Brahmin, who was very golden and beautiful, he broke out in leprosy. And the leprosy came on his nose, and within a few days his nose melted away and fell off. Then everyone was, <gasps> Be careful, don't commit Vaishnava. And especially they were very, very respectful to Haridastha. But you know that later, many years later, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Vrindavan, he came to Navadvip and he came to Koladvip, to the place where my Param Gurudev established Devan and the Gaudimat, because that place is called Aparad Banjan Pat. And all the persons who had made offenses to Mahaprabhu and his associates, when he returned there, they came and fell at his feet weeping. So later, Mm, Mahaprabhu told him, you should mm, honor Srila Haridas Thakur and constantly chant the holy name. And he followed Mahaprabhu's order and gradually the leprosy went, to get, went away and he became beautiful again. So this is why my Param Gurudev made his mark exactly in that place. Devananda Gurudev, the Aparad Banjan part, where Mahaprabhu forgave Gopal Chakravati, where he forgave Gopal Chapala told him he had made offense to Srivast Thakur, go, and he also had leprosy, go and serve Srivast Thakur. And then Gopal Chapla became David Kinandan Das, who has written the poem, Vaishnav Bandana. Mm -hmm. All the students who had criticized Mahaprabhu and tried to beat him, <coughs> when he was uh, in Navadvip, sorry, he tried to beat them, and then they all ganged up against him. You know, Mahaprabhu was chanting, Gopi, Gopi, Gopi. <laughs> and some students came and said, eh, it's not written in Shastra to chant Gopi, Gopi. At least chant Krishna. But he was in the mood of the Gopis who are angry with Krishna for deserting Radharani and going to Mathura. So he jumped up with a stick. And then all those students said, who does he think he is? Because you can give a punishment to others, but not to a Brahmin. There's no corporal punishment or physical punishment to a Brahmin. So then they all became against him. So even they, those students, they all came and they fell at his feet and Mahaprabhu forgave them. At that place, Aparad Banjan Pak. So in this way, Srila Haridas Thakur has proven the glories of the Holy Name. Once, there was one landholder named Ramachandra Khan. And he wanted to be very popular, that all the people living on his land, they should give honor to him. But to whom were they giving honor? To a Muslim. Haridas Thakur. He was thinking, that this person is renounced, he has no money, he's not giving them, he's not bribing them. Why is he so popular? I am very rich and I'm doing favors for everyone to get popularity. But no one loves me and they all love him. Mm. But I think he's not a real sadhu. 
So I'll prove it. So then he called a number of prostitutes and they were standing in a line and he said, I have a mission for you and I'll reward you very handsomely with great wealth. I want someone to volunteer to go in the middle of the night to the Bhajan Kutir of Haridas Thakur and seduce him and make him fall down and then I'll come with my men and arrest him for being an imposter. So then, none of the prostitutes wanted to do this. But one of them stepped forward, I'll do it. Her name was Lakshahira. So they made a deal. But she knew that Haridas Thakur, that this is before the appearance of Mahabharata. He was very, very young and handsome and beautiful. So she said, just allow me to spend one night with him. Then the next time you should come with your soldiers and, and arrest him. So they agreed. And Sila Haridas Thakur in the middle of the night was chanting. And she appeared in the door of his Bhajan Kuti, dressed in a very seductive way. Hmm? In a very revealing way. And speaking very provo provocatively. He said, oh Haridas, you are so handsome. <laughs> what you, young woman could ever resist you? Please accept me. I want to serve you. Haridas Thakur said, yes, please come, sit down. I have made a vow to chant a billion now. And I have almost finished. So just sit there and as soon as I finish my rapt, then I will satisfy you. So then she sat down and two were sitting there in front of Tulsi and Haridas Thakur was Chanting the holy name, Shuddha Naam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. The whole night, when she saw the sun was rising and people may come to visit him, she became shy. And she gave, she gave pranam and she left. Then the next day in the night she came. There was a Tosi outside his Bhajan Kutir. She gave pranam to Tosi and came in, oh, Haridas Thakur apologized. I almost finished, just please sit down. So then she said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, 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 Ram. Whole night passed again. She gave pranam and she went away. Ramachandra Khan was becoming quite impatient, he said. When can I arrest him? She said, look, he has a vow and he's nearly finished. So just give me another night and then after that you can come. So then the next day she came and she gave pranam and, and sat down with him. But now this time, by the power of his pure chanting, she was also sitting in Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. And she began to chant also and tears began to flow from her eyes. Huh? Then she gave pranam and she said, Oh Haridas, please forgive me, please forgive me. I am very offensive. Actually I have been employed by Ramachandra Khan to compromise your integrity and bring ill fame upon you. Please forgive me for my offense. Haridas Thakur said, From the very first day that you came here, I knew why you had come. Only I asked you, please sit and chant to purify you. She said, oh please accept me as your disciple. So then Haridas Thakur said, you should go home. And all the money that you have earned from your profession, this is all contaminated from lusty persons. You should distribute this to Karmakanda Brahmanas. And then, oh, keeping on all your jewels and fancy clothing, you should give away and keep only one white cloth. And then come back here. So then she went away. She distributed all of her ill-gotten gains to the Karmakanda Brahmanas. She shaved her head also. And uh, keeping only simple white cloths, she came back to Srila Haridas Thakur. So then he 
gave her Tulsi and said, sit here and chant continuously in front of Tulsi. And then Haridas Thakur, he got up and he went away. Very soon she was chanting and heart melting and she realized Krishna praying by the mercy of Srila Haridas Thakur. And now all the villagers were coming to see her and give pranam and pranami. Ramachandra Kram was furious. <laughs> I wanted to be more popular than Haridas. And what is the result now? This low-class prostitute is more popular than me. Everyone is honoring her. Huh? He was so upset. So, <laughs> in this way, because he made Vaishnava Aparad, then the effect of this offense grew in his heart more and more. And because of this, after some time, Nityananda Prabhu with a traveling party came to his house and said, uh, he sent a messenger, oh, Nityananda Prabhu is here with some devotees, please, can you give them shelter? And, uh, and he said, uh, you can, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a Goshala over there, go and stay in the Goshala. So when Nityananda Prabhu heard this news, he laughed. Yes, yes. He had actually come to point, don't Nityananda Prabhu can give mercy to everyone. He can give mercy to Jaga and Madai, who were committing so many heinous sins every day. The Chitragupta and the scribes of Yamaraj, they, they had writer's cramp from trying to write down all their sins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nityanandabhu can give mercy to them, but to those who make Vaishnava Aparad, not possible. Nityanandabhu laughed. He said, oh, very soon, Muslim soldiers will come here and they will go in his temple room. He had a temple room to Durga and they will slaughter a cow in his temple room. It will become completely contaminated and they will destroy everyone and everything in this village. And then Nityananda left. And after a short time, he, his family, all, and all his associates and the village was destroyed by soldiers. So be very careful. Don't commit Vaishnava Aparad at any cost. Another time, Haridas Thakur was chanting in the middle of the night and another very beautiful woman came and tried to seduce him. He said, oh, just sit down, chant. She came again, it was very like before, but this time it was not a prostitute. In the end, that beautiful lady, she bowed down to him and she said, I am the goddess Maya Devi. It was Maya Devi herself, Durga, the wife of Lord Shiva, so powerful. She said, I have bewildered Brahma. I have bewildered Narat. I have bewildered Shiva. I have bewildered Gautam Rishi. All the Devatas and all the Rishis, I have bewildered them. But I could not bewilder you. Then she said, I received from my husband, Lord Shiva, Ram Nam, but now I want to receive from you, Krishna Nam. The teaching here is this, that Krishna Nam is much more powerful than the Nam of Lord Ramachandra, Sitapati, Raghunath. Raghupati Raghava Raja Ram, Patita Pavana Sita Ram. Krishna is more powerful. Hmm? Krishna is more loving. You know that Sita has so much love for Lord Ram. But hearing the words of a washerman, the critical words of a washerman, then Lord Ram banished her, sent her to the forest. Hmm? So Ram, because he's Mariyada Purushottam, he always follows Mariyada then he can reject you. But Krishna is Prema Purushottama. For the sake of love, he can transgress any Mariyada. He can transgress any boundaries. Perhaps you know, there were 16,000 princesses and they'd been kidnapped by Narakasur. And they were staying in his palace. So, just like 
Ram, he sent Sita to the forest. Why? Because there was a doubt about her chastity. In the eyes, not in Ram, but in the public. Because she had been captured by Ravan and stayed in the Ashok Bhatika in Lanka. Hmm? So similarly, in Krishna Leela, not one princess like Sita, but 16,000 princesses had been captured by the demon Narakasur. And Krishna came there and killed Narakasur. And he freed those princesses. And then Krishna said, Oh, you tell me where you want to go. I can take you to your father's house. Or if you have a fiancé, I can take you to a prince and you can be married. So then all those princesses were crying. They said, according to Vedic culture, a woman cannot stay in the place of another man other than her husband. So no one will accept us. We'll be unmarried. We'll be bachelorettes our whole life. Alas, alas. No one, because according to Mariada, no one will accept us. See, Krishna smiled. And he called Garuda. And he put them all on the back of Garuda and took them to Dwarka and gave them a palace each. He said, I will marry every one of you. <laughs> and in this way, see, Krishna had 16,000. So Krishna is more merciful than Ramachandra. Lord Ram can give you up. But Krishna has the vow. I reciprocate. Whoever you are, whomever you are, if you want to serve me and love me, I love you and serve you also. Krishna becomes the servant of his devotee. So for this reason, Maya Devi herself came and after testing Haridas Thakur, and he passed the test that no one had ever passed ever before. Then she begged to become his disciple. So he is Namacharya because he's the Nam Guru of even Durga Maya Devi. Also. And by this it has been shown that Krishna Nam is more powerful and Krishna is more merciful than anyone. Because Krishna's only business is tasting rasa. When other incarnations come, they have so many things they have to do. Yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bhavata avyuta nama dharmasya tadatma nam srijanya Prithanaya sadhu nam vinashya tadusk they have to destroy demons and establish dharma so, so Lord Rami has to do all these things Krishna in Mathura and Dwoka but Krishna in Vrindavan his only business is prema rasa near just karite ashradhan relishing prema rasa he has nothing else on his mind so only a person can love you fully and be absorbed in love if he doesn't have any worries or any other duties or responsibilities. Because love you have to be, there has to be a density of the love. The love has to be so condensed that there's no other thought in it. You can, I really love you but I just gotta go on. Establish Dharma over there. And deal with a few more demons. I just wait. No, Krishna is in a vesh, a prema vesh, absorbed fully in prema. So only Krishna is the true object of everyone's love and who truly can love you. So Sila Haridas Thakur proved all of these things. After some time he came to Navadvip. And there Sri Advaita Acharya was performing a Srada ceremony. That means to uh, offer oblations in honor of his deceased ancestors. So at that time when a Brahmin makes a Sada ceremony, then he invites all the other Brahmanas ca to come and there's a Jagya and uh, there's a plate called the Shraddha Patra, which is given to the most exalted person in that assembly as on to, as, uh, to honor them. So all the Brahmanas came and the Shraddha ceremony was going on and when it was time for Advaita Acharya, to give the Shraddha Patra to the most exalted person, the Brahmanas are all thinking, hmm. he will give to me. Another one was thinking, no, he'll give to me. Hmm. But Srila Haridas Thakur, who came out of love for Advaita Charya, did not come inside the house. He was sitting outside the gate. So he wanted to show honor by attending, but he felt, I am unqualified to be there with all these uh, high class persons because I am an outcast. So Advaita Chari took the plate, everyone was sitting with great expectation and he walked past all of the hundreds of Brahmanas and went out through the garden, out to the gate and gave the plate to Srila Haridastha. 
Seeing this, all those Brahmanas became angry. They got up. Oh, we have been insulted. Let's go. Don't stay here any longer. And they're all leaving. And Haridas Thakur was crying. Oh, wait, wait, Acharya, why did you do this? All of your guests are upset now and they're leaving. See, Advait Acharya said, Oh, if I feed one Vaishnava like you, it is more than feeding millions and millions of Brahmanas like them. Because you are chanting Shuddhana, the pure name. So then those Brahmanas were leaving, but then as they were going, then some good sense came to them. They remembered that when Advaita Chari was a small child, his father took him to the palace of a king. And into the, there was a deity of Durga there. And he came in, his father bowed down, the king bowed down, but the little boy was standing up. The king said, uh, why don't you bow down to Durga? His father said, hey, bow down. And he, <laughs> no, you should bow down. Don't disobey your father. Just don't embarrass me in front of the king. Now bow down. <laughs> but the little boy would not bow down. So then his father said, look, this is your final warning. Alright. And then when the boy bowed down, then the king's beloved deity of Durga exploded <laughs> into a thousand pieces. <laughs> Because the Dwaita Chari's incarnation of uh, Shiva and uh, Vish Mahavishnu combined, Durga cannot accept his pranam. So Durga in the deity she left and the stone psh, exploded into a thousand pieces. Then the king was thinking, oh, maybe we should have listened to the boy. Eh? So those brahmanas who were running away from the Sraddha ceremony of Dwaita Acharya, eh? then they remembered this. They thought, oh. Actually, Haridas Thakur is a very elevated person. If we make offense, we don't know what could happen. Then they became calm and quiet and they came back and they sat down to honor Prasad. <laughs> so Advaita Charya has manifested some of the glories of Srila Haridas Thakur by uh, this beautiful Leela. So, you know, also before Mahaprabhu was born, there was a, a Kazi, a Muslim magistrate. And he, he was very upset that the Muslim was chanting the name of Krishna. So he arrested Srila Haridas Thakur. He thought that, oh, he's an apostate. He's an infidel. Because though he's a Muslim, he's chanting the name of a Hindu god. And if we let him, if we allow this to happen, then others may convert as well. It will be terrible. So to set an example for everyone, he should be punished. So then the Kazi arrested him and put him in jail. So he was in jail and then the Kazi brought him in front of the Nawab who is the emperor. Kazi is the local magistrate and the Nawab is the emperor. So he brought him in front of the Nawab and said, oh this person is Muslim but he's chanting the name of a Hindu God and setting a very bad example. So he should be punished. So then the king said, oh why are you doing this? The king was more reasonable, the emperor. Why are you doing this? Haridas Thakur said, There is only one God. There is only one God. And each person in this world is inspired to serve that God in the way that God inspires them to serve Him. Huh? Haridas Thakur he has no sectarian spirit at all. He's not saying, oh, you are bad, this is good, this is bad. He's saying each person who is served, serving God is being inspired by God in his own heart to serve Him in that way. So we should respect everyone who has faith in God and the ways in which they are serving Him. The Kazi could not tolerate it. And he exploded in a temper tantrum. He said, look, if you don't stop chanting this name, then we'll punish you very, very severely. Because the punishment in our scriptures is death. So then Shilaridas Thakur said, Kanda Kanda Haindeya Jaya Jari Pran Tabu Ami Padani Nachari Harinam You can cut my body into a thousand pieces and my pran may leave, but my tongue will never give up chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So try to follow 
the example of Srila Haridas Thakur and complete your Harinam every day. Hmm? Try to be like Srila Haridas Thakur. Oh, don't be, oh, you can cut my body into a thousand pieces and uh, my pride may leave. But hmm? if I've got a lot to do today or I have to visit my mother or watch the Super Bowl or I have some important things going on, then I'll just chat a little bit. I'll try to catch up tomorrow. No. Don't make any excuse. You must prioritize Hainam every day. Only time you can have some concession is if you are with your Guru Dev and some big festival is going on and you have to serve all the Vaishnavas day and night in the service of Guru Dev. Then you can do it and you can catch up later. When we were on Parikrama, Vajmanda Parikrama, one devotee was in service to play Murdanga because Gurudev wanted everyone singing and dancing the whole day around Govardhan and all the various forests. Hmm? So then there was one Murdanga player and he was playing Murdanga with the Japamala. Ah, like this. And Gurudev came up and snatched his Japamala away, took it away. Do your same. <laughs> And I will chant Japa for you today. So then he considered, is my, what is best for me? My offensive chanting or today Gurudev will chant for me? <laughs> so, Haripal Prabhu, you know who you are. <laughs> so, in this way, Silahardas Thakur showed his nista in Nam. And so then the Kazi told the king, though the king was somewhat reluctant, he said he should be whipped in the 22 marketplaces. So then they took him and they put him in a prison and are waiting for the day when they would give that punishment. So when Haridas Thakur was in the prison, then all the prisoners there, all the criminals, they were so happy. They thought, a sadhu has come into our prison. We were thinking we cannot ever have sadhu sangha because we only have criminal sangha. <laughs> but it is a great miracle that today we have sadhu sangha. And they fell at the feet of Srila Haridas Thakur and said, Oh, sadhu Maharaj, please bless us, please bless us. Haridas Thakur said, I bless you that you can stay here in the prison. Then they began to cry. What, what? We don't want this blessing. Sile Haridas Thakur said, let me explain. When you had your freedom, you misused it and you committed so many sins. That's why you're here. So you want to get out of prison and you want a blessing for this. But when you get out, you'll just commit more crimes and go to hell. So it's better that you stay here, you keep out of trouble and chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And make your life perfect. <laughs> So he gave them this blessing. After some time, the soldiers came and they took Haridas Thakur out from the prison and they brought him to a marketplace and they beat him viciously with very hard canes. He was tied with rope and they dragged him by the neck with a rope to the next village and then they beat him with canes there. His bones were broken, his flesh was cut and falling off. It was brutal. All the people were crying, alas, alas. And usually after two or three marketplaces, person is dead. After 22 marketplaces, then those who are beating him, they will say, oh Haridas, please, die. Why won't you die? Because after this, if we go back, and then the king, the Chikazi finds out that we did not kill you, he'll kill us. Hmm? So please die. Haridas Thakur was so merciful, he said, oh, why didn't you say? <laughs> you should have said so before. Yeah? You excuse me that your arms are aching so much from all this beating. Please forgive me that I've given you so much inconvenience. Because Srila Haridas Thakur understands. Tanada peace we need Torura peace is Amarina Madena Kirtaniya to be more humble than a blade of grass, to tolerate everything like a tree. If someone throws a stone at a tree, 
then the fruit will fall down. The tree, oh yeah, take a fruit. The tree will give to those who are beating. So Haridas Thakur is like this. He understands because he is incarnation of Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna. Tatainu kam pam su sumikshamano bunjana eva pakritam vipakam ridva papubi vididan namaste jiveti yo bhukti pade sudaya bhak. Today they sent out a lecture of my Gurudev online of on Haridas Thakur's glories. So then I opened it to see. I want to remember what Gurudev has said on that day. So then I opened it and I read, and Gurudev said, Prem Parojan, stand up and tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> it was my, <laughs> my own kata. <laughs> then, oh yes, I remember that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so then, Haridas Thakur, he himself in the form of Lord Brahma has said this verse. That person who patiently waits for the mercy of Krishna, all the time suffering the reactions, Atmakritam, of his own deeds. Haridas Thakur is not thinking, these people who are beating me are beating me. I have beaten myself. Hmm? If you plant the seed of a thorn tree, then when it grows and you get pricked by thorns, you cannot complain, ah, oh, I wanted the mango. <laughs> You did not plant the seed of a mango tree. You planted the seed of a thorn tree and now they are sticking in you. Hmm? So in the same way, our suffering in life is not caused by others. Don't point your finger at anyone because three fingers are pointing back at yourself. Whatever problems are coming to us, we have made it for ourselves. So never quarrel with anyone, never give a problem, never criticize anyone. Give respect to everyone and Kirtaniya Sadahari. Chant continuously. Jiveti your mukti back. And if a person will simply accept this mood in their life, then Krishna's lotus feet become their inheritance. Just like the son of a wealthy man doesn't have to do anything. When his father passes away, he will automatically in inherit the entire estate. So the same way, someone who simply lives their life accepting, taking the blame, for every situation, not blaming others and always glorifying the name of Krishna, then you don't have to do anything else. You will inherit Krishna's lotus feet. That will become your property. Hmm? So this is the essence of life. Chant the name, take the blame, <laughs> taste the brain. <laughs> this all you have to do. So Haridas Thakur was very humble. And he said, oh, what, you want me to die? Why did you say? Excuse me for inconveniencing you. And then Haridas Thakur went into Samadhi, into trance. No pulse, no breathing. So they thought, oh, he's dead now. And for evidence, they brought the dead body all beaten and blood everywhere and broken and brought the body to the Chan Kazi. The Kazi was, to the Kazi, sorry. And the Kazi was very pleased. Good, very good. So then they said, uh, Okay, so we, we should bury him now. He said, no, 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 no. Burying is for the Dharmic, for the holy people, holy Muslims. He was an infidel. Just throw him in the Ganges. So they have a reverse conception <laughs> to Vedic Dharma. So then they threw his body in the Ganges and he was floating in the Ganga. But after some time, he came out of Samadhi and climbed out of the river. Haribo! Without a scratch. Perfectly beautiful and golden and body soft like butter and not a single scratch on his body. And everyone saw him. Ah, what happened? We saw 22 marketplaces. He was brutally thrashed. And now he has no injury at all. And he became even more famous. But that Kazi, he was completely destroyed. All the devotees, they came to him and they fell at his feet. And even those who beat him, they also came and fell at his feet, the ones who had beat him with sticks, and said, forgive us. And Haridas Thakur said, no, no, there's nothing to forgive. What is there to forgive? 
you are only following orders, you would have yourself been killed if you did not do it. It is not your fault, it is my fault. Because previously I heard some criticism. I allowed some criticism of Krishna to go in my ear. And because I did not cover my ears and immediately leave that place or cut out their tongue. Shastra said if you hear criticism, then you should silence that person by establishing the real truth and Siddhanta, quoting from Shastra. And if you cannot do that, you should cut out their tongue. And if you cannot do that, you should kill yourself. These are the three options when you hear criticism. <laughs> or you can cover your ears and immediately leave. Immediately. Don't hear criticism of anyone. Be like Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. Vaishnavera nindikama nahi parikani sabe krishna bhajankari e matarjani. It is said of Raghunath Bhatta Goswami that he would never let any report of some bad behavior of any Vaishnava enter his ear even. He would stop, oh, stop. And he would fold his hands and say, everyone is doing bhajan except for me. If you want to attain Krishna Prem, try to follow these principles in your life. So Haridas Thakur said, it was my fault. I listened to some criticism. But Krishna is so merciful. Krishna is so merciful that he only had me beaten in 22 marketplaces. It was just a small token of what I really deserve. This is the heart of a Vaishnava like Srila Haridas Thakur. So, so afterwards when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world and he was in the house of Srivast Thakur and he picked up the cloth with all the Shalagram Shilas on the altar, he lifted it up and he sat on the altar of the Supreme Lord himself with all the Shalagram Shilas in his lap and he manifested his Bhagavata because everyone thought, ah, oh, he's Nimai Pandit, he is the Jagannath Sutta, he is Sachi Nanda, son of Sachi. But now he manifested that he was Krishna himself, the Supreme Lord. And he began to reveal to the different devotees that he was the Supreme Lord. So at that time, he called Haridas and he said, Oh Haridas, remember that time when you were beaten in 22 marketplaces? Haridas said, yes, yes. At that time, I was so angry. I called my chakra, I wanted to kill them all. But my chakra would not move. It failed. Because you were praying for them. Oh my Lord, they don't know what they are doing. Please let them not suffer on my behalf. And Mapu said, so I only had one option. And Mapu turned around and took off his chadha and all the marks were on the back. He said, I took all the beatings on my own back. All devotees were weeping. How Mahaprabhu loves his poor devotees in Haradastha. Suno suno nitananda suno haridas Savata amara agyaya karo savatra pakash Gari gari gya magie bhiksha Bolo krishna bajo krishna karo krishna shiksha Mapu said, hey listen nitananda Oh listen haridas I want you to manifest my order everywhere I want you to go door to door begging For what? Just beg people from people this, Bolo Krishna Bajo Krishna Koro Krishna Siksha. Chant the name of Krishna, worship Krishna, and follow his teachings of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in your life. Just beg this. So Mahapu asked Nityananda Prabhu and Srila Haridas Thakur to go preaching. Why? Because Nityananda Prabhu is from a very high class Brahmin family in the Shandilya Gotra. You know, Nityananda Prabhu, his actual passport name is. Uh, so he's from very high caste. And Haridas Thakur is from out, outcast. So someone may say, oh, this Sankirtan, if, they, if, if you go preaching, if only Nityanandapur will go preaching, then the low caste people say, oh, that's okay for you Brahmanas, but this is not for us. And if a low caste person will go preaching, then the high caste persons will say, oh, this is low caste activity, this Harinam Sankirtan and everything. We won't do it. So Mahapu deliberately chose the highest rung of society and the lowest rung of society to go preaching together. And that everyone, the whole spectrum of society will accept their teaching. 
So there are many beautiful pastimes of Haridas Thakur and Nityananda Prabhu. On another day, we can discuss them. But you see how Haridas Thakur was very active. Not only was he chanting 300,000 names, he was chanting 192 rounds of Japa every day. Three lakhs high enough. It's a bit more. Actually, he was chanting more than three lakhs. So, he was chanting this every day, but he also went for preaching. And so, Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad has glorified him. Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad said to Haridas Thakur that Achar Prachar Namer Karaha Dui Karya Tumi Sarva Guru Tumi Jagatera Arya. Hey Haridas, there are some persons who preach, but they're not doing bhajan, they're not chanting. And there are some persons who are chanting, but they don't preach. But you, achar, that is your own practice, prachar and preaching, namer karha dui karya, you are doing the two karya, the two duties to Nam Prabhu. We have two duties to Nam Prabhu, to chant and also to propagate. So he said, you are perfect in your preaching and perfect in your practice. Therefore, to me, Sarva Guru, to me, Jagatera Arya, you are the best of all persons in the world and you are the Guru of the whole universe. When Aridas Thakur was in Jagannath Puri and he became, I have the pastime of becoming very old. One day, Govinda, the servant of Mahaprabhu, came to see him. Because Mahaprabhu would send Jagannath Mahaprasad to Haridas Thakur every day. Because Haridas Thakur was so humble, he thought, I am an outcast, I cannot go to the Jagannath temple. Jagannath himself used to come in the form of Mahaprabhu to visit him every day. So one day in the morning, Govinda came and to give some prasad, and Haridas Thakur was lying flat and chanting very softly. When Govinda came, he folded his hands and he said, I cannot take prasad. I cannot honor my prasad. So I'll just bow to the Mahaprasad because I am sick. So then Govinda, he went back to Mahaprabhu and told him. So Mahaprabhu was very concerned. And Mahaprabhu went there from Kashimishra Bhavan, the house of Kashimishra, to Siddha Bhakpu, where Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kuti was. And he approached Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was with pranam according to his capacity in this incapacitated, invalid state. Mahaprabhu said, Oh Haridas, are you not well? What is your illness? Haridas Thakur said, My Lord, my illness is that I cannot complete my fixed number of rounds. Mahu said, Oh Haridas, now you are old. Please reduce the number of rounds you are chanting. You are Mukta, a liberated person. And your whole life you have chanted perfectly and you have preached perfectly. Now you reduce something. Haida said, I have one request of you, my Lord. Please, can you fulfill my request? Mahaprabhu said, what can I do for you? Haida Stakur said, I know that soon you will complete your pastimes in this world. And I cannot tolerate it. So be very merciful to me, allow me to go first. If you will go, it will be too painful, allow me to go first. Mahaprabhu said, it is not right that you should ask for this. Haridas Thakur said, there are so many insects, there are so many ants in this world, millions wandering here and there. If one ant will die, then what loss is it to the world? So in the same way, if I will die, there is no loss.
Mahapu said, In my life, if I have experienced any happiness at all, it was only because of you. All the happiness in my life is only because of you, Haridas. And then Mahapu became silent and he went away. You see, Mahapu wants one thing and Haridas Taku wants another. Whose desire will win? Even though Krishna is Ajit, unconquerable, but he is defeated and conquered by that his pure devotee who is always absorbed in Harinam, Rup, Gun, Lila, hearing, chanting, and whatever. So Mahapu went away, but then later he came back with all of his associates and with Kirtan. And he approached Srila Haridas Thakur and sat down beside him. And all the devotees were loudly chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Thakur took the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu onto his heart and looking in the lotus eyes of Mahaprabhu, he called out, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And all became silent like birds at the end of the day. And they had a sporty, they were reminded of the passing away of Bhishma Dev in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. When he was on the bed of arrows and Krishna came to see him and in the presence of Krishna, Bhishma Dev departed from this world. Then Mahaprabhu, he picked up the body of Srila Haridas Thakur in his arms. So he actually, dead body is unclean, you should not touch. But what? Sneha Vase. Kaya Krishna Kare Swatantra Vichar. Out of affection, the Lord becomes beyond all rules and regulations. And he picked up the body of Srila Haridas Thakur and was dancing in a kirtan. And with a big procession from Siddhapaku, they went to the shore of the ocean. <laughs> and then Mahaprabhu bathed Srila Haridas Thakur in the ocean. He said, from today, this ocean is the Charnamrita of Srila Haridas Thakur. So it is not only a Tirtha, it is a Maha Maha Tirtha, the ocean of Jagannath Puri. So Maha Maha Tirtha. Then Mahaprabhu very respectfully put down the body of Srila Haridas Thakur and with his own hands was digging in the sand and put the Srila Haridas Thakur sitting like this with his Japamala in Samadhi and with some Mahaprasad and some cloth of Lord Jagannath. And then with his own hands he began to fill and told the devotees, everyone come. And they all came and gave a handful of sand. Then Mahaprabhu did very loud Harinam Sankirtan and Parikrama around the Samadhi. Hare Hare Namo Krishna Yadavaya Namaha gave Dandavat Pranam at the Samadhi of Silahar Das Thakur and then Mahaprabhu went into the town to all the shopkeepers with his own cloth and was begging Ma Jagannath Mahaprasad to collect for his feast. So after Mahaprabhu had collected so much, Sarok Damada was always protecting him. He said, oh give me this and he took and gave to some servants 
and then other servants were also begging and collecting. And they brought all the Mahaprasad to the Samadhi. Mahaprabhu personally put down all the leaf plates and made all the devotees sit down in lines. And with his own hand, he was serving everyone Mahaprasada. And when everyone's plates were served, then Swarup Damodaka Swami said, My Lord, please sit down. No one will eat without you. So then he made Mahaprabhu sit down and he took Mahaprasada. This is the Tirubhav Mahotsava, Disappearance Festival. We are observed, just now we will also serve Prasada. This is part of the, the way to honor the disappearance of a Vaishnava. And all took Mahaprasada. Then Mahaprabhu, he began to glorify Srila Haridas Thakur as if he had five mouths all speaking at once. He said, Haridas Thakur was a great jewel in this world. Today the sun has set with his disappearance and the world has lost the great jewel. Anyone who has danced and sung in the kirtan here today, anyone who has put one hand of sand in the Samadhi of Haridas Thakur, anyone who has done his parikrama, anyone who has tasted the Mahaprasada in his honor, in this Tirabhav Mahotsav, all of them, all of you, will attain Krishna Prem. Hari Bo! And then the devotees they went into the ocean to take bath. When the devotees with the solemn hearts, their hearts were breaking in separation from Srila Haridas Thakur, they went into the ocean. And when they got into the ocean, then they began to splash each other with water and play like children. <laughs> they became frivolous like small children. Why? Because they realized the meaning of Viraha Mahotsav, separation festival. Vi, Raha means separation, but Vi means Vishesh, special, intense. And Raha means secret. The real Viraha Mahotsav is not a separation, but is a very special, intense and secret meeting with that personality in the core of your heart. So when they went into the ocean to take bath, then, though they were thinking, oh, Srila Haridas Thakur has left us. We will never see him again. But Srila Haridas Thakur, smiling and chanting the holy name, appeared as a spurt in all of their hearts. Oh, I will never leave you. And they became overjoyed and in ecstasy, they were playing like children and splashing each other in the wood. So, it is very important to remember and honor Nama Charja, Srila Haridas Thakur and try to follow his teachings in our life. Especially, have a sambandha with him like Raghunath Das Goswami. Those who are advanced Vaishnavas, whenever they chant, whenever they hear, whenever they remember, whenever they read, everything that they do, they never do it from the random vantage points of this material body from which they have taken birth due to any past karma or anything. We always do everything from the vantage point of our Vishesh Sambandha, special relationship Guru Dev is giving. So we are Rupanuga, the followers of Rupa and Raghunath. So be related to Haridas, like Rupa and Raghunath. You know, we discussed earlier how Haridas Thakur used to be invited to the assembly Dharma Sabha in the house of Govardhan Majumdar. So he re regularly used to visit there when Raghunath Das was a little boy. When Raghunath Das was a little boy, he used to see Haridas Thakur coming and go running. Oh, Dadu, Dadu. Hmm? Oh, Grandpa. Grandpa. And Haridas Thakur used to oh, embrace little Raghu, Raghunath and take him in his lap. And Raghu would say, Oh, Dadu, Grandpa, tell me a story. And Haridas Thakur used to tell the little boy, Oh, once there was a little boy just like you. His name was Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> and he would tell all the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and different pastimes from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So from his childhood, Raghunath Das Kaswami had these strong impressions. If you can get strong impressions in your childhood, then you are very fortunate. Later in life, 
do manifest. It's very, very powerful sadhana. So try to love Sila. Raghunath Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur, like that relationship. Oh, Dadu, Dadu. Very, very close. You know, he can tell to Raghunath Thakur Swami the story of Prahlad Maharaj because he himself is the incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. So his explanation will be very convincing <laughs> because he remembers everything. <laughs> so we want the mercy of Srila Haridas Thakur to be absorbed in Harinam to have Guru Nishta, to be in, absorbed in the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our Acharyas, and to follow all the teachings, have good impressions of all the teachings of nine cantos. And then by His mercy, after some time, we may be able to follow in the footsteps of Rupa and Raghunath. So in this way, I offer my Shraddha Pushpanjali. Param puja pad niti lila pristo mishnu pad aishto rasat sisimad bhakti vigyan bharti ko swami maharaj ki jai nama charya sri haridas thakur ki jai namo karisi hari naam sanketana ki jai gaura prema nande